In 2008, it was revealed that the Canadian government, under the leadership of Bilderberg member Stephen Harper, would be buying $25 billion worth of mortgage pools through the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. Shortly after the election in October of 2008, the re-elected Harper Conservatives unilaterally announced the government will purchase up to an additional $50 billion of insured mortgage pools by the end of the fiscal year as a part of its ongoing efforts to maintain the availability of longer-term credit in Canada. This action will increase to $75 billion, the maximum value of securities purchased through Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. There was no debate in the Canadian Parliament over whether to hand out $75 billion in taxpayer money to the private chartered banks, nor was it covered by the Bilderberg-controlled mainstream media. The control of the Bilderberg Group extends not only to the media and the control of information, but also to the Canadian banking system itself and our ability to control our own currency. In 1938, Prime Minister William Lyon Mackenzie King nationalized the Bank of Canada, giving control of the Canadian currency to the people of Canada. Although the issuance of currency is held solely by the Bank of Canada, the creation of credit through the issuance of loans is still largely controlled by private chartered banks. As part of the Bank of Canada's charter, the government can borrow up to 50% of its own money from the Bank of Canada at 0% interest. The other half of the interest is paid back into the government, allowing for the financing of our own infrastructure, such as the St. Lawrence Seaway and the Trans-Canada Highway. Because of Bilderberg member Paul Martin, Canada now borrows its money from the private chartered banks at the going interest rate, effectively handing over the usury and interest to private corporations. Prior to Prime Minister Brian Mulroney, all banks had to hold an 8% reserve, meaning they could lend out the same money 12 and a half times through credit and loans. Mulroney dropped this to a 0% reserve, allowing private banks to loan as much money as they want simply by entering a new line on a ledger. Currently, the Bank of Canada is only responsible for 5% of the actual debt created in the form of currency. The private chartered banks, such as Royal Bank of Canada and TD Bank, own the remaining 95% of all debt. Think of how much control this amounts to when you consider all of the digital payment and loan options used today, such as credit cards, debit cards, internet payments, RFID chips, smartphone purchases, and even biometric identification, which is now used in India for bank withdrawals. Very few people use real currency, and the trend is turning to an increasing reliance on digital and computer technologies, of which are largely controlled by members of the Bilderberg Group. Members of the Bilderberg Group who are involved in the Canadian banking system include President and CEO of Royal Bank of Canada, Gordon Nixon President and CEO of TD Bank Financial Group, Edmund Clark Deputy Chair of TD Bank Financial Group and former Canadian Ambassador to the United States, Frank McKenna Former Minister of Finance and Director of Manulife Financial, Michael Wilson Managing Director of Credit Suisse Securities, Ronald S. Lloyd. Former CEO of Scotiabank, Peter C. Godso. Former Governor of the Bank of Canada, David A. Dodge. And Governor of the Bank of Canada and former Goldman Sachs Executive, Mark Kearney. This is Dan Dix here reporting for Press for Truth. The video that you just saw was from a documentary film that I produced over a decade ago now called The Turning Point. And in it, I documented the Canadian connection to the Bilderberg Group, but more specifically in that clip that I just aired, I showed you how the Canadian banks and other financial institutions were secretly bailed out 
back during the 2008-2009 financial crisis, but this may be new news to you because back then it was all kept under the wraps. The government at the time under Stephen Harper was saying this is not something they were going to do. Meanwhile, that's exactly what happened. Now you fast forward to today's financial crisis and again, Online pundits, media pundits, people on TV are all saying, no, the Canadian banking system is solid. It's safe. It's sound. We're not the same as the U.S. Uh, we're not dealing uh, with that financial crisis in the same manner that they are, so there's no need to worry. Everything is okay. But I'm here to tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, the same thing I was telling you back then. It's not safe sound and solid. The Canadian banks were secretly bailed out, and had that not have happened the entire system would have come collapsing down. So today we're gonna to talk about that, guys. In case you missed my most recent video on this, from SVB to global CBDCs, here's what you need to know. In that video, I discussed the collapse of the SVB bank, which sparked fears of an industry-wide banking contagion that could spread and take out small regional banks, leaving only the too big to fail banksters left, at which point they could introduce a global central bank digital currency. Now we're already starting to see this very thing that I discussed two days ago implement, implement itself. Uh, as we see here, Bank of America just raked in $15 billion as panicked customers ditch their smaller lenders for the too big to fail firms in the wake of the SVB crisis. You've got Goliaths like JP Morgan also winning, analysts say, and uh, First Republic Bank uh, is now in rescue talks with some of these big US lenders. You got the likes of JP Morgan Chase and Morgan Stanley now who are the ones who are in talks of rescuing First Republic Bank guys. You've got Credit Suisse just borrowed up to $54 billion from the Swiss Central Bank as these uh, banking contagion continues to spread all across even to Europe. Um, as we see here, the lender said it was taking decisive action to strengthen its liquidity as it looked to become a simpler bank. Shares in Credit Suisse fell 24% on Wednesday after it said it had found weakness in its financial reporting. This prompted a general sell-off of European markets and fears of a wider financial crisis. And those fears are continuing on a global scale. As we see here from uh, Bloomberg, fears of financial meltdowns haunts governments. Um, but for the purposes of today's video, I wanted to show you a study uh, that revealed these secret bank bailouts, which was completely going under the radar back then. Here it is. Can Canada's banks received a $114 billion bailout, study asserts, guys. So we're going to talk about all of this and much more in this video.